Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be talking about the diseases of the pinna. So let's get started. So in this video, we're mainly going to be talking about two diseases. The first one is going to be perichondritis. Then we're going to be talking about hematoma oris. So talking about perichondritis first. So let's start from the absolute basics. We are going to break up this word and see the meaning behind it. So breaking it up gives peri, con, and itis. As we all know, peri means around, chondr means cartilage, and itis means inflammation. So it is the inflammation of the tissue around the cartilage. And this tissue is called perichondrium. Next, what exactly is perichondrium? So the perichondrium is a dense layer of fibrous connective tissue that covers cartilage in various parts of the body. So the perichondrium is responsible for supplying blood to the cartilage and hence responsible for keeping the cartilage alive. It also nourishes the cartilage, promotes cell renewal and reduces recovery time from damage. Next, what are the causes of perichondritis? So it occurs mainly after a trauma to the ear because this trauma leads to the entry of bacteria in the pinna. It can also occur after burns or insect bites. It can also happen after ear piercings because in a way ear piercings are also a trauma to the ear, right? And especially if the person doing piercings does not keep his equipment clean or hygienic. So this can lead to perichondritis. And finally, the most common causative agent of perichondritis is Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Now how is the patient going to present to you? So the patient will present with dull aching pain and the severity of this pain will keep on increasing. And if you will do a physical examination, you will find that the pinna is red and swollen. But extremely important to note is that the lobule will be spared in this condition. This is because the lobule does not contain the cartilage, it only contains fat. So this is a case of perichondritis and you can see that this upper portion here is inflamed. So there is redness, edema and the pinna is hot to touch. But at the same time you can note that the lobule looks relatively normal. So here the lobule is spared. Now there are two conditions that you have to differentiate between. One is a perichondritis and the second one is cellulitis. So how do we go about this? So in perichondritis, the upper part of the pinna is affected. We just saw that. But in cellulitis, the whole pinna will be affected. So easy for us to remember, in perichondritis, the sparing of lobule will be seen. But in cellulitis, there will be no sparing of lobule. Now what is the treatment for this? So we will have to use broad spectrum antibiotics and because pseudomonas is the most common agent, we will use anti-pseudomonal drugs. And these should be given IV. In severe cases where there is a buildup of fluid, there may be subperichondrial abscess which requires drainage. Also note that if there is relapse of perichondritis, so this may point towards an autoimmune disease. Now in the question, what do you have to look out for? So look out for an inflamed auricle with sparing of lobule. That's it. Coming on to our second disease which is hematoma oris. So in this condition there is a collection of blood underneath the perichondrium of the ear. This is very typically seen after a trauma or a hit to the ear. And it is because of this that this condition is mostly associated with boxers and fighters. The second name for this condition is cauliflower ear. So comparing these two pictures, you can see that there is a slight resemblance between them. Now let's try to understand the anatomy so that these conditions that we're talking about right now make more sense to you. So this is a cross section of the pinna. On both the sides we have the skin, then we have the loose connective tissue and then we have the cartilage. Surrounding this cartilage, we have the perichondrium. And this is the collection of blood that we were talking about. So let's see what happens in this condition. Normally, the perichondrium should be completely stuck to the cartilage. But in this condition, there is a collection of blood between the cartilage and the perichondrium. And remember what we discussed in the first part of this video? The perichondrium supplies blood to the cartilage. So what can go wrong if you will have this collection of blood here for a long time? So there will be mechanical obstruction of blood flow from the perichondrium to the cartilage. Due to this, the cartilage will not be receiving blood and it will become avascular. This may lead to necrosis, infection or permanent deformity. So this is another example of the cauliflower ear. He is a very famous UFC fighter. Some of you might even recognize him. So here you can see that the auricle is deformed. But also note that in this condition also there is sparing of lobule. 
And why is there sparing of lobule? Because the lobule does not contain cartilage again. It only contains fat. For this condition, you need collection of blood between the perichondrium and cartilage, right? So if you don't have cartilage or perichondrium, how are you going to get hematoma oris in this part of the ear? Again, very, very important to remember this. Now, how is the patient going to present to you? So the patient will present with a tense, tender and painful pinna after a blunt injury. The treatment is needle aspiration so that you can take out all the blood that has been collected and then pressure dressing. So in the condition, you have to look out for the profession of the patient. So he might be a boxer or a fighter or something like that. Or even if the patient is not a fighter, look out for some history of blunt trauma to the ear. Maybe the patient just fell down on the floor. So that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. If you have any doubts, please leave them in the comments or you can message me on Instagram anytime. I upload high yield MCQs daily on Instagram so please consider following that. The link for my Instagram will be in the bio. Thank you.